This time we're joined in Goss's garage by Lyndon Abel. He's the general manager of Rommel Harley-Davidson in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, Lyndon, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Pat. All right, now, a lot of people buy motorcycles and they think that, okay, I've got a motorcycle, I don't have to do anything to it. <laughs> well, it's a machine. Sure, it's a machine. It needs maintenance just like everything else. All right, and I guess uh, relative to cars, the most important fluid of all is going to be the engine oil, and the same with motorcycles. Absolutely, motorcycles, uh, the same, the engine oil is absolute primary importance. With the Harley-Davidson, it comes with the added complication of there's a lot less of the oil in there, and it's an air-cooled motor, so the motor operates at much different temperatures. You know, there are, are, are lower lows and higher highs because you don't have the cooling system to keep a consistent temperature. Yeah, and a lot of people don't seem to realize that uh, oil does a lot more than lubricate. Great point. So yeah, oil really does four things. Everybody knows that it lubricates, but it also cools, it also cleans, and it also protects against corrosion. And as far as the cleaning part goes, uh, you know, it's a little bit like mopping a floor. You start out with clean oil or clean water, but as you're mopping that floor, your water's getting dirtier and dirtier, and at some point, you're not cleaning the floor anymore, you're putting dirt back onto it. So, um, you know, for people that say, well, the, the oil, you know, lubricating properties can still outlast a certain mileage interval, that's true, and because of improved manufacturing tolerances as well as much better oil engineering, the oils will last longer, but eventually you got to get the dirt out of the out of the motor, uh, which means changing the oil and the filter, of course. Yeah. Well, the thing that gets me is the person that asks me a question about oils and then says, "But I keep my air filter clean all the time, so there's no way for dirt to get in my engine." <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish that were true. Yeah, I, uh, the dirt that builds up, uh, the crankcase has to breathe, and there are byproducts from Blow burning by, fossil right. fuels and all of this stuff. And, and beyond just the, you know, the dirt and you know the carbon that's in there, you also have byproducts of combustion, as you well know. Some, you know, some byproducts of combustion are water, which doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but if you're doing a lot of short trips and that water. Uh, the oil doesn't come fully up to temperature and boil that water off into steam, water builds up into the oil and that can really destroy the lubricating properties of the, of the oil. But other things combine to form acids which really are corrosive to the metal parts. If you're using the vehicle all the time, that's not quite as bad because they're held in a little bit of suspension, but it, when the bike sits for a long period of time, instead of that oil doing its job and preventing corrosion, these acids and so forth are hanging out on the metal parts causing corrosion. And at the end of the day, oil is just a lot cheaper than steel and aluminum. Yeah, that's true. All right, you brought some samples here. Yeah. Here we start out with... That's fresh Harley-Davidson Sin 3 motor oil, so it's uh, right out of the bottle. Uh, okay, now before we go further here, you do recommend synthetic oil like I do. Uh, it depends on the vehicle, but for modern Harley-Davidson motorcycles, absolutely. Synthetic is, uh, you know, not to say that, that fossil oil can't do a nice job, but the synthetic's going to be better. It's better flow characteristics, better clean characteristics. If you don't mind spending a little extra money, uh, it will serve you very well. Okay. All right, so this is what it looks like when it comes out of the bottle. Here we have one with how many miles on it? 2,500 miles. So Harley has moved to a recommendation of 5,000 mile oil change intervals. And if you're doing 10,000 miles or more a year um, and you're mostly highway miles, uh, that's probably an acceptable recommendation. But unfortunately, people look at that recommendation and they're doing stop and go driving and they might it might take them two plus years to get to 5,000 miles, so they're only getting their motorcycle serviced once every two years. And this is terrible for your motorcycle. And we just poured some of this uh, oil that had been in a motor for 2,500 miles into a jar so that you can see the level of contamination that's already in there. Now the oil's doing its job in keeping that stuff into suspension, which is great. You can't see some of the other byproducts of combustion, which aren't so good. Uh, but you know this oil's pretty good shape. By the time you get to 5,000, it's just really not the kind of stuff that I would want running around in my 
uh, inside of my motor. It's, yeah, for it's sure. that dirty mop bucket water. Well, it's the cheapest way to preserve an engine. Without question. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing any better for any engine, car or motorcycle or boat, you name it. Yep, absolutely correct. Okay, now another thing, we find people in cars, and I'm sure it's the same thing with motorcycles, uh, brakes. They're there, they work, they're ignored. Well, the, I mean, the most common statement is it's a sealed system, why would I have to change the fluid? So, you know, we hear that a lot. I've been hearing it for, you know, many, many years. Yeah, but they aren't sealed. They're not completely sealed. You'd like them to be completely sealed, but the reality is you have some of the atmosphere in there. As you um, squeeze on, as you wear your pads down, you get more and more of that fluid that's inside of the caliper, which means that it's dropping in the master cylinder. And while they make gaskets so that, you know, that tries to compensate for that, the reality is it doesn't take much humidity uh, to add water into a fluid which is designed to be a water sponge essentially. Okay, now here we have fresh fluid. That's yep. dot four fluid. We've got fresh fluid and we've got fluid with 10% water. And by the way, maximum allowable water is, is, is 4%. So it has two and a half times the maximum allowable amount of water in this fluid, and you can't tell by looking at it. So for the rider who says, well, listen, I, I pulled the cap off and I took a look at it and it looks fine, so I'm sure it's fine. You can't tell. You need a professional to test it. And, you know, we can test and tell if it's one, two, three, four percent or more. Um, but if you don't do that, you really have no idea what's going on. As water builds up, that water can, uh, when it's heated up, can turn into steam. Uh, which is one of the reasons that your brakes get spongy and on an anti-lock system you're also running the potential of corroding extremely expensive parts. And the recommendation I presume is similar to cars, we recommend two years regardless of mileage. Yes, yeah. yeah I mean maybe if you kept it in a climate controlled um, low humidity, but come on please. It's, again, it's not expensive maintenance um, to flush your brakes. Um, not only that, but it might save your silly could neck. save your life, literally, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Okay, now here we have some uh, very colorful fluid. Yeah. This is something we do not use in cars. We do not use it in cars. So Harley-Davidson, up until the mid-2000s, had for a couple of decades used silicone brake fluid. Uh, the nice part about silicone brake fluid is it's not... Uh, corrosive, but it's more compressible and um, as you taught me, it uh, foams. So with uh, anti-lock pumps, um, it will create uh, uh, foam and bubbles which won't allow the um, calipers to uh, grab and release as quickly as the pump is designed to do that. Alright, so this is new here. Yeah, that's brand new. And this is the same DOT5 fluid uh, just a couple of years later. Um, it's no longer purple, it's totally different. In fact, if you look at uh, some really old .4, it's, uh, it's, it's not too dissimilar to that. So people can get confused about what they have. And the absolute key is that you wanna look at uh, what's on the master cylinder and follow the recommendations of the master cylinder. For goodness sakes, do not look at it, assume that it's not purple, therefore it must be dot four and pour dot four in there. You can really cause a mess. All right, well, with dot five, I mean, it breaks down. It's yeah. not forever. There isn't any fluid in a car or a bike or anything else that lasts forever. Yeah, quite correct. So flush it? Absolutely. I, I would just flush it every two years. I mean, it's probably a little more um, forgiving. Uh, it's not going to cause quite as much of a problem if you don't flush it in two years, but why take that chance? It's your brakes, for goodness sakes. Okay, now over here in this one, this is for the person who isn't smart enough to read and follow label directions. Yeah, this is just proof that dot four and dot five don't mix, right? So <laughs> you. Yeah, slosh this around, and pretty soon it says, nope, I'm going to separate. Yeah. Uh, but th that looks relatively benign. The reality is if you put that in your brake system, um, it will ruin your entire brake system. So, um, it, it, geez, you know, 30 seconds of checking to make sure that you use the right fluid or um, a very expensive repair. You choose. Yeah, well, I would choose to use the right product. Good call. Now, another part of the bike is forks and fork oil? 
Yeah, uh, another one of those things that people say, gosh, this is a sealed system. Why do I ever have to change it? Also, it's one of those things that you don't sort of see the inside of. There's no dipstick to show you that it's dirty. But in fact, you know, the sliding action of forks going up and down um, does introduce water and, and little bits of the atmosphere into that oil. And uh, as, the, as oil gets into, uh, excuse me, as water gets into oil and then it's forced through these orifices, it really does a great job mixing that stuff together. And old fork oil will come out looking like, you know, a thin, uh, weak chocolate mousse. It's, it's awful. And uh, that fluid is designed not only to help control um, movement within your suspension, control the spring, uh, but it's also designed to keep those components from corroding. And it does neither effectively when it's turned into this mush. Unfortunately, the rider typically just sort of slowly gets used to the degradation of performance and isn't necessarily aware that things have changed so dramatically. Um, you know, the proper thing to do is just follow a schedule and change that. It's typically done in mileage, but if you're a low mileage rider, you want to do it every few years. Okay, so essentially what we're talking about here is doing all of this preventive maintenance, number one, to keep ourselves safe and keep the bike safe. That is key. And if you don't do it, uh, you're going to shorten the life of the machine. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Lyndon, thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. And if you have a question or a comment, drop me a line at radio at goss-garage.com. And if you have any questions about Harley-Davidson's, please give us a call at Rommel Harley-Davidson at 410-263-3345 or just stop by 30 Hudson Street in Annapolis, Maryland.